that we're doing is called linear relations. And it basically just works off of what we did last time. What we're going to learn about today is line segments. So a line segment is different than a line. Does anybody already know what a line segment is, what the difference is? Yeah, it's a chunk of a line. So it's a line that has two endpoints. A line goes forever. A line segment stops. So we have three line segments. And what you need to do is fill in the blanks. The length of AB is how many units long? To calculate how many units long, you can just count it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's six units. Go ahead and do C and D on your own. Fill the blank on your own paper. How long is C and D? You should get 10 for CD. And how many do you get for E to F? Seven. Okay, we've worked on coordinates before, so coordinates is the next part of this. You have to write in the coordinates for the two end points. So the coordinates for A is 2 over and 8 up. So it's 2 and 8. Yeah, Joe. The coordinate for B would be 5, 6, 7, 8 over and also 8 up. So it's 8, 8. Remember the X comes first and the Y goes second. These should be automatic to you guys almost at this point because we've already worked so much with it. Keep going. What's the point for C? Minus 3, comma. Minus 3, comma 4. What's the point for D? Liam. Edge comma. 7, comma 4. Correct. What's the point for E, Keith? It's important that you guys are able to do this. Anyway. It's the last time I never deliver crap to you. Oh. <laughs> the first time I ever delivered crap to you. The first and the last. I think you should crap. Let us press a point is now. <laughs> make his brand out close. I, uh, I would make him throw it away if I were you. That, oh, that's a that's a good dad right there. Horrible <laughs> coach. <laughs> How in the world did you manage to spend nine bucks on a hot chocolate with bagel? <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> say honestly, for that for nine bucks, I will buy a hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mr. Big. Okay. The reason this is important is we're going to talk a lot about lengths, like how long and the difference in between two points. So the difference in x coordinates between b and a, that's what this says. So take a good look at that. If you see x with a lower script b, that's saying the x coordinate of point b. So what's the difference in x coordinates? From XB to XA. What you do is you take the X coordinate of point B, which is B, and you subtract the X coordinate of A. And you get 6. So 8 minus 2. Isn't that the same thing as? Exactly, yeah. So you'll, you should notice that that. 6 is 
the same as the length that we counted out one at a time. The thing is, you're not going to get given direct across points, so you're going to have angled points, and you have to figure out the difference between them. But you're also just going to get given points. There's not going to be a grid. Yeah, C is basically it's a way of checking A. It's another it's it's showing you it's another way of calculating the length of a line. Right? So if you took the X coordinate and subtracted the X coordinate of this one, it's telling you how long that line is without actually having to go through and count out each spot. So if I gave you X of 1,000 and X of 2, you don't have to count out 998 times. You could just do the subtraction. So what's the difference in XD and XC? What is, it? What is there? 10. So you would go positive 7 minus negative 3. Would that work out? What's what's seven minus negative three actually equal to? Ten? Because they cancel each other out. If you mess up your negatives, that's why those brackets are important, right? So it's seven minus negative three. And you can do the same thing for x f and x e. So try that one. That's negatives all over the place. Okay, what's the difference between XF and XE? So if you did that properly in your calculator, what should you get? Negative 7? Positive 7? XF. Negative 2. So negative 2 minus everything is 9, right? Oh. Should equal positive 7. If you're getting negative 7, you might want to take a look at your calculator. And see how you're punching in your numbers. Yeah, your legs, your leg segment should be positive, right? If I'm asking how long something is, you wouldn't tell me negative. Right? So if I was like, how long is this pen? You wouldn't be like, oh, it's negative ten centimeters. You'd be like, oh, it's ten centimeters. And you might be calculating backwards. So if you did that minus that, it would actually give you a negative number. But you know that it's not actually a negative line segment. That's not possible, right? If you get a negative number, check your work first. And if it still makes sense that it gave you a negative number, it's actually, you need to use your kind of common sense to know that's a positive value. You're not going to have a negative length. length. Is that Michael? So that's stuff that we're going to get into later. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to be working with on 5.2, 5.3, and so on and so forth. But it all builds off of being able to calculate line segments. So at the bottom it says, how can the coordinates of the endpoints of a horizontal line be used to find the length of a line segment? And we already answered that, right? That can give you the length of the line segment. We've already talked about that. Okay, we're going to move on to vertical lines. And it's still the same concept, so we'll go quick. What's the length of GH? Calculate it on your own. 14. Plus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Who else got 12? You should be doing it on your own. <laughs> it seems like really trivial, but if you can't calculate and count it out properly, that can be a pain, right? It can really hurt you. 
Okay, what's like the IJ? Should be five. What's the length of KL? Yeah. Hey, now go ahead on your own, plug in all the coordinates. The coordinate of G should be negative three, comma, negative, yeah, eight. Go ahead and do the rest on your own, and then check the answer after. So write it in. Eat left-handed, right, right handed <laughs> What a guy, hey? Check, you gotta make sure you're doing this stuff right, guys. Check up on the board and make sure you got it right. Remember the first lesson of our last unit was really easy too. But it all built off of that. So if we didn't practice that together, it really did all pay off well for us in the end. Yeah, yeah, so Matt's got a good observation here. He's saying if you got a vertical line, that the x's are the same, which is totally makes sense, right? Because they're straight down that same x point. And if you have a horizontal line, you could have noticed that the y's were the same. Quick review, something that we did last unit. If you look at this line, L to K, would it be a function or would it be a relation? Hand up for function. Hand up for relation. Hand up if you have no clue. Okay. The way to tell, guys, if something is a function or a relation is you draw straight lines through the graph. So if I drew a straight line here and I kept moving it over and see how it would go right down the straight line that's already on the graph, that means it's hitting that point more than once. I've hit that graph here and here and here and here I've hit it a million times. If you hit it more than once, it is not a function. So this would not be a function. And that was a bit of a trick on one of the questions, right? So you draw vertical lines. It's called the vertical line test. All right, back to this, Michael. No, so not for testing of its functions. No, that's a good question. Okay. The difference in y coordinates. So what's the difference between y h and y g? Should go four minus and then in brackets negative eight. Yeah. And you should get that the line segment is twelve. This works the exact same way as the x coordinates. It's just a way of telling you how long a line segment is. So yj minus yi should give you five. And YL minus YK should give you 6 if you're doing those calculations properly. Again, it asks you the question, how can the coordinates of the endpoints of a vertical line be used to calculate the length? Well, we just subtract the Y's. You're always taking the bigger and subtracting the smaller. All right.
and this is where it gets a little more interesting. There's no graph, there's two points. <laughs> How long is line segment AB? Emma, what do we need to do? Um, if the y's are the same, it's a vertical line? So we drew it out. If the y's are the same, that means you have a point over here somewhere and a point over here somewhere. Yeah. But you got it. Keep going. So you know it's a horizontal line. You got it. It's that easy. So to figure out the line segment, you see that the y values are the exact same. So take the bigger x value and subtract the smaller x value. And you should get that it's equal to 7. It's 7 units long. Question 2. Question 1, you could just graph it. Question 2, you can't graph. Because the coordinates aren't numbers anymore. This is where it gets a little bit wonky. So, which numbers do we have to subtract from what? What do you think, Josh? Yep, because B and B are the same, right? So the Y values are the same. Which one's bigger, A minus 2 or A plus 4? A plus 4 would be the bigger one, just kind of common sense, right? So A plus 4, and then you want to go minus A minus 2. You need to remember from unit 1. One or unit two, your distributive property. So this negative goes into both things. And you should rewrite this to be a plus four minus a plus two. You need to be able to understand that. And your answer should just be 6. A minus A, they cancel out. 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. So, A minus A, they cancel out. 4 plus 2 is where you got your 6. Question here. You could, if you recognize that the A's would cancel out. But it could be A minus 2 and say C plus 4. So then your answer would be A minus C plus 6. Like you could get a full on equation, right? The, the variables won't always cancel out. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. On this one, yeah, you could have identified it, just been like, yeah, those, those A's go away. But that won't always work. Try line segment RS. Determine the length of RS. Try it on your own. Oh, no. Oh, no. We got a virus. Once you've done the length of RS on your own, calculate the length of PQ. The length of RS should have gotten plus 13, 9 minus negative 4. Go ahead and try the next one, it's tricky. Who's got an answer for the line segment of PQ? Yeah. 
Western. Yeah, it's 10. So you should have seen that the A's are equal to each other. And done B plus 10 minus B. B's cancel out. Good job, Wesson. All right. A little bit of review. Still building on the same thing. Pardon? Backslash, yeah. So if you look at the next slide, you see we're going to have to work with Pythagorean theorem. It's important to remember that Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. It says, in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. That's where you got your a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I'll show you good. And then it says, use Pythagoras theorem to determine the length of the line segments on the grid. This is how you're going to calculate lines that are on angles. You're going to have to draw in a triangle yourself and finish off the calculation. So you need to go from your top point and draw a line straight down. And then find your other point and go straight across. And you've made a triangle. You have to use whatever method you want to figure out the length of these two sides. You can use the addition subtraction. You can just count it. Whatever works best for you. I like counting when it's really small because that's easy. So one, two, three, four. The bottom length. The side length should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. When it's small, it's really easy to count. So we might as well just take advantage of easy math. Get it. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. When we're doing Pythagorean theorem, value is A, which value is B, and which value is C. Dawson's S. Which value is A? Oh, well, what would I put right here for A? Yeah, what else could I put? Ten, yeah. The important part is that C is your hypotenuse. Your longest side. If you get those backwards, you'll get it wrong. And it's a thing, it's a, it's a trend we've had all year. And it's a trend that's never going to go away. Your hypotenuse has to be that C value. So, put in the numbers. 4 squared plus 10 squared is equal to C squared. You should get that to be 116 is equal to C squared. But we don't want the length of C squared, right, Reese? What do we want the length of? I know. You don't want the value of C squared, you want the value of Aaron's? C. So what do you have to do to 116? Yeah. Square root of 116. 10.8. 10. 10.1? Yeah. So C is equal to 10.77. Hard to read because the head's all off. You round it to the nearest tenth, which should have been 10.8. The pen is really off right now. Some of you guys need to practice your rounding. On that quiz, there was a lot of people who rounded wrong, especially on the numerical response rate that you round to the nearest hundredth. On your final exams, 
you'll just get that question wrong. For your unit exam, I was a little more lenient, and if you got, say, 0.89 instead of 0.88, I gave it to you anyway. On your final exam, though, those marks can add up really quick, right? <coughs> you get a couple errors on rounding, and you can lose, like, 10 marks real fast. <coughs> so that's the length of this H, or the length of A to B. Go ahead on your own and try to figure out CD on your own. You got to draw a line straight down and draw a line straight across and count how long they are. You should get that this line is 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 7, 8. You want to just count it. Then you got to use Pythagorean theorem. When you use Pythagorean theorem, you should get that 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to, and we're just going to call this x, x squared. That should be 80 is equal to x squared. And the square root of 80 should give you what did you get again, 80? Did you get again 80? 80.9 should be your final answer for the length of CD. That's going to become important, guys. We're going to build off of this type of stuff. Go so under practice booklets. Remember, you will not get your unit assignment unless you show me a completed practice booklet with the work shown. So not just the answers. 